My name is Kathy Gudis, and I'm a professor of history at UCR, where I focus on public history. I think it's for those reasons that I'm a historian that I was really interested in the, the series of photographs and accompanying texts that are entitled Maria's Great Expedition. They were made in the mid 1990s, which is also another reason I'm really interested in them. In one of the photographs in particular, and its caption, from 1945, Aliso Village, Boyle Heights, California, uh, Fernandez does an extraordinary thing. She features multiple ways in which we might understand history and memory embedded within the photograph, its setting, and the text that accompanies it. She's using a couple of different forms of history making. One, this historical reenactment that she kind of turns on its head, because if you think of historical reenactment, it's probably best known for the kinds of civil war reenactment in which there are Southern white players who are reenacting scenes that kind of put them back into a position of power and into a position of being winners rather than losers. She's turning that on its head by featuring the regular people of regular life, in particular, an immigrant woman. So there's in one way a photograph that's a historical reenactment that also has a long history in photography related to other artists who, like Fernandez, are featuring themselves in the photograph. So she's featuring herself, but she's also trying to trace the personal and implicitly political stories of her own family and her Great grandmother. And so she's bringing into bearing experiences that we don't typically see within the traditional historical archive, and that sometimes require jumping over the fragments or weaving them together to create a complete story. So, in that sense, we might think of her as actually playing a role in bringing oral history or the story that we're reading at the side piece to be able to bring experiences to bear that you wouldn't necessarily find in the archive to unsilence the voices of the past and those fragments of experiences that are usually really challenging to find. She's also taking on another mode of historical production that also intersects with photography and the arts and that's documentary. Um, and, and I'm kind of interested in the way in which she's both doing a recovery process, but also offering us something that fits into past traditions. In this case of Aliso Village, she's actually following in the footsteps of both a 20th century photographer named Leonard Nadell, who was hired by the Housing Authority of Los Angeles to document these examples of public housing that were built as the United States was gearing up for defense in the late 1930s and early 1940s, when Aliso Village was actually built. And it was built, and Leonard Nadell documented it, um, as um, an integrated housing development, public housing, that would serve as this model of futurity. And so it was designed in a modernist style, and he documents it through four families who are living there from different racial backgrounds. And so this idea of public housing at this one moment where there's a utopian idea of both integration and social housing is really interesting when we see it by comparison in the view that Fernandez offers us because she poses herself here using some of the tropes of social documentary photography from the early years of the 1900s when Jacob Rees and Lewis Hine and uh, Dorothea Lange were also seeing the photograph as an instrument for social change. And so in this case, she has her subject herself looking at us straight in the eye. So she's revising the sociological or anthropological way in which sometimes people were extracted from, right? Their stories used to show their impoverished conditions. And in this case, we're seeing something else. We're seeing Maria as a prototype um, of a Latina. She's doing laundry, she's doing needlework. And yet at the same time, she's looking us straight in the eye um, unflinchingly. She's also documenting something of the destruction of the past, not just the destruction of public housing as a possibility, because uh, she's posed in front of what is the stand-in for Aliso Village, which 
by the time this photo series of Fernandez's was completed, would have been torn down. Aliso Village, uh, the public housing model was seen as too riddled with gang activity and was seen as a slum in parallel fashion to the ways that the same site had how had had been home to another set of community members um, who lived in what at the time was called the flats, which was demolished in order to wake, make way for Aliso Village's public housing. So here we see this fragment of the past that itself in 1999 was torn down. So in reconstructing this moment of history from 1945, in which in the label that accompanies it, we hear the personal stories of those who were affected by wartime politics. We hear about Japanese American internment, people being removed and incarcerated um, in 1942. We hear about um, the, the characters who are working with LULAC to desegregate Santa Ana public schools, which by 1946 would have successfully been done. And again, through the family involvement of Latino families who were involved in the uh, Mendez versus Westminster case, which was that great preamble or predecessor to uh, Brown versus Board of Education. So in this sense, we see the politicized subject her personal story there and her, in a way, prototypical pose as a Mexican-American maid or laundress or other laborer, right? Here rendered both political and personal. So I love this as a form of both historical resuscitation, reenactment and reconstruction that nevertheless points to its continuities with today, because in many ways we can look back to this moment of the 1940s as a lost moment where public housing and social housing was seen as something that would be a successful answer to the problems of housing shortages, which we know today haven't been solved still, in which housing as a human right still hasn't been solved as an issue, nor have the wages of those who labor in the same positions as Maria is standing in been enough to sustain their own housing dilemmas or accumulation of wealth through the ownership of property. So we see a continuity in the face of also trying to reconstruct a past moment of history.